Hey everyone, it's D77 here, and welcome to Not Just Another Unboxing Video. I've got something here that a uh, great many people have been delighted to receive over the last couple of weeks. Finally got my own through the door yesterday, and this is the first chance I've had to actually get to the unboxing bit. This is the ZX Spectrum Next. The long, long-awaited spiritual successor to the 128k toast rack and I think it's time we opened up the box and saw what's inside put the Stanley knife away in case of uh, mishaps And here it is. Just the box alone looks amazing. Proper professional piece of work that. Let's lift it out. Dispose of that. Knock my coasters on the floor while I'm at it. Still one left. Now, the box itself, unlike previous Spectrums, is a uh, lid over rather than sliding out from a, a sleeve. This is one of the accelerated models, and as you can see, there have been a couple of protective stickers added. One gone. The lid does appear to be off a bit, so I think there's been some movement inside. Let's see if this bad boy's intact, shall we? Now that is beautiful. These couple of extra pieces of foam were the fix from experience of the earlier batches <clears throat> a number of the uh, normal and plus models uh, got bounced about a little bit in transit this is quite often unavoidable but it did result in the computer itself moving about and uh, some of the keys being dislodged which does not appear to have happened this time around now this this is truly beautiful got a nice little heft to it actually feels like a real computer which of course it is i will argue to the bitter end joystick ports on the front there's controls on the side and the array of different connectors etc on the back over here on the left we have the power a covered expansion slot now this being the accelerated we have the debug and the usbs from the raspberry pi in addition to the hdmi port the ear mic loading saving port audio out and vga ps2 port there for an external keyboard and mouse which i'm not going to be dealing with at this point But seriously, look at this. The gloss on the keys. It That looks flawless to me. Beneath it, we have the manual. Again, a beautiful piece of work. Very, very thick. Pretty small print in there as well. And up here is the power adapter with all the fittings. Of 
course I'll be putting the UK 3 pin plug on. I'm going to take it upstairs now. And before I connect it up, I'm going to open it up and install the extra RAM. So here we are. Got the next on my desk, which we are going to turn over and undo the screws. Is that all of them? That was all of them. So here we have the underside of the circuit board. Okay, don't want to break anything, don't want to force it. Let's see where we are here. Now we've got a ribbon cable. I believe connecting the daughter board here. And we have a couple of ribbon cables for the keyboard. But this needs to come off. And it's not budging. Okay, I've decided to leave the cover for the expansion slot in place. Now what I do need to be careful of here is that uh, I carefully disconnect the ribbon cables for the keyboard. Now those are connected on the underside. See them here. So I'm going to gently ease that out. Same for this one, gently, gently does it, which gives us a lot more freedom to move. Gently remove the third cable and shall I bother? No, now I'm going to leave it in. I'm just going to handle it carefully. Let's turn this all around. And we're focusing over here on these two slots. I have two of these RAM chips. I've had them in my possession for three years now. I'm looking at the little round i'm not sure you're going to get close enough really yeah there is a little round notch on this corner here which matches up with this corner of the socket here simply a case of dropping it in place evenly Try that again. Let's 
so I put them in. I wasn't having enough confidence in myself. I wasn't um, putting enough pressure on the chips. They're in, they're flat. They're at the end, they're supposed to be. The little dent in the chip is lined up with the dent in the socket and all is as it should be. So I'm going to put this back together now. Complete reverse of what I did, obviously. And then I'm going to connect it up to the TV that I bought off Facebook Marketplace. Unfortunately, it's not a CRT, but uh, needs must. It's got pride of place on my desk. We'll, uh, we'll see that set up in a minute. So here we are. Back together with 2 meg of RAM. Um, not on camera. I've reformatted the SD card. I'm connected by VGA and an audio lead. So I'm now going to switch on the TV and plug in the next. And here we get to find out a double whammy. Does the next work? Does the TV work? Okay, so the TV didn't work. That's disappointing, but it was a five pound gamble off of Facebook. It had a four by three screen. It had built in speakers. I was happy enough with that as a risk. Didn't work. So for now, I'm attached to my monitor, my monitor, which has no speakers. I'll have to sort out an audio cable at some point soon. Um, so I'm not going to be playing games for you today, which I was I was going to. But here we are, I've gone through the update, cut the power off, put the power back on again, and uh, it's simply on the screens where it's, it's telling me what's what, giving me additional stuff to read. I'm just going to hit the space bar here, go straight into the OS, and here we are. As you see, I've got the options, browser, command line, next basic, and so on, and 1792k available. I'll go into the browser, obviously making no noise at all, just going to look at games, see what's on it when it comes. Uh, next games, no, no, classic 128, anything? Crystal Kingdom Dizzy Remake, I like it. I will be playing that soon actually, I, um, I've been meaning to for quite some time and having an actual spectrum to do it on is going to be rather good. Now, um, you can use the edit key to go up a level, or of course, just like any directory browsing, you can go through... Ooh, Trash Man! Trash Man tape file. I'll play that in 48k mode. And boom, it's on. I said I wasn't going to play games, so I'm not going to have a game, but that's what we're faced with these days. We've got pretty much instant loading time. Uh, the accelerated version does make use of TZX files if you want to put them on. It can simulate the loading in its entirety. Um, of course, it has the ear mic socket, so you can connect a tape recorder or a phone with some playback software. Now, just as a quick aside, because I'm not playing today, I'm going to show you what I have here. This is the 8-bit do M30. Not the 2.4 gigahertz version, because that was out of stock. Uh, everyone at Revival had them, and I, I've missed the boat there, so I did have to buy a Bluetooth dongle for it. I've paired them already, I know it works, because I've used it on my Mega Drive. And now I get to use it on my Spectrum. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, got some information out of it, learned uh, the do's and don'ts, especially the uh, don't be a pansy and actually believe in yourself when you're inserting memory chips. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you in my next video.